Morning everyone, Dr. Eric, your fitness physician, Peptide.Doc here. I'm just finishing up my series on peptides. I talked about thymus and beta-4 uh, in a two-part video series. This is the, the uh, final ver uh, uh, portion of that, uh, the last part. So then we'll move on to some other peptides. So we were talking about TB4, and uh, today I'm just going to talk about applications. So uh, the biggest one, of course, that we talked about before is tissue repair, wound, injuries, inflammatory conditions, massively important and very beneficial for healing, whether it's muscle, tendon, bone, soft tissues, neurologic injuries, uh, even heart, we'll talk about that. Wound healing, uh, venous ulcers, wounds from uh, you know, surgery or injuries and things of this nature. Um, neurologic is an impressive as well, and whether it's a tr uh, uh, TBI, uh, traumatic brain injuries, uh, it's neuroprotective, has promyelinating effects. It's, uh, it helps with production of myelin, that protective sheath around the neurons, which, and the brain cells and the, and the, the nerve cells. Uh, which of course helps with transmission of uh, important neurotransmitters, helps with brain function. Um, it can definitely be helpful in for conditions like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and MS and uh, neuropathies and things of this nature. So very, very uh, neuroprotective, protecting, protective of the brain, not only on a regular basis, but certainly around these injuries or these neurologic conditions, um, not only in prevention, but also in healing when these things happen. People, uh, they, again, this is, these are used commonly with other uh, peptides as well to help pro, pro, you know, with neuroprotection. You know, we talk about that synergistic effect with thymus and alpha, with BPC, uh, cerebral license, some of these other ones that are very uh, helpful for brain function, for both in healthy individuals and, and individuals with these uh, neurologic conditions. Uh, cardioprotective as well, uh, not only for post-infarction, in other words, post-heart attack, preventing fibrosis or scarring after a heart attack, um, can help improve and maintain heart function uh, and help prevent um, basically size of that infarction when you have people have unfortunately have a heart attack it can shrink and get fibrotic and scarred and then there's less heart tissue to perform that's why a lot of people have worse uh, cardiac function afterwards so it can help prevent that it's one of the things that does prevent this fibrosis we talked about this actin uh, protein etc and how it prevent you know can help with the healing so it prevents this scarring to happen this is helpful in the liver as well it's very liver protective people that have uh, NAPLV or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or toxin induced injuries from alcohol consumption, alcohol toxicity, um, uh, toxins, and, uh, whether it's medications or uh, true poisons and things. People, but a lot of people unfortunately have liver injuries or liver damage. Uh, this can be very helpful in preventing that fibrosis. Um, cirrhosis, another example, post hepatitis. A lot of cirrhosis is a big problem here in the United States, so uh, it can be very helpful for uh, preserving liver function, preventing that fibrosis, that scarring, that cirrhosis, which is basically scarring of the liver tissue and when in chronic liver disease. So very protective of the liver as well. And it's been useful in eye as well, corneal injuries and uh, other damage to the, the corneal tissue. Uh, very helpful in prevention and healing of these injuries as well. So a lot of very important health benefits. Uh, again, heart, and uh, brain, uh, neurologic conditions, eye, liver, massively important. These are all huge, huge important problems which can have a massive health benefit uh, for anybody with these types of things. Another thing it's helpful for is uh, just infections, whether it's a sepsis, which is an overwhelming infection of the body, uh, but or simple viral infections, things like Zika virus, which you don't hear about, or this is the common cold or the common flu. Uh, this, along with TA1, can and actually improve healing uh, from influenza or flu, the flu, or even the common cold way better than anything else, better than Tamiflu um, and things of this nature. So um, very helpful for, vi for viral infections, similar to TA1. Um, it's also helpful with pre and post surgical conditions. Again, helps with that inflammatory response, uh, proper healing of, of tissue. And again, we talked about neuroprotection, uh, things of this nature. So whether it's going in before surgery or post surgery, uh, these are more advanced uh, applications, but can be very helpful with recovery and proper healing uh, pre and post surgery. Another one, more of a cosmetic thing, is just hair growth. There's some cool protocols uh, that I have and other docs have been using for hair growth, uh, both topical and uh, systemic in, uh, application. TB4, along with a couple other different peptides, and especially in combination with PRP or exosome therapy, uh, can have a great uh, improvements in hair growth for men and women. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Or I can, if you're, I can point you in the right direction and if you're in another area, other doctors and uh, clinicians that are using this uh, quite well. So. Huge, very, a lot of applications, both health and cosmetic wise, uh, for TB4, similar to TA1. Uh, we talked a little bit about last time and dosages of this. Again, it's, it varies quite a bit, so make sure you're seeing a qualified clinician who knows what they're doing. It varies on the clinical scenario, okay? It could be anywhere from 300 micrograms all the way up to a milligram uh, at a time. The key thing with this one is to dose it for maybe a no, you know, three months or less, you know, because it's not because of the growth pr properties and it does have a lot of beneficial effects. Not something you wanna be doing all year round for more than three months at a time. You wanna cycle on, off and on this as needed. So there's some cool protocols to alternate this on a certain, uh, in a very certain pattern with TA1, some of these other ones, but 
that's a key thing. So you don't want to take this willy nilly. Uh, it's very all the peptides are extremely safe. This is one because of the growth properties. You just want to be careful with. Um, again, very synergistic with TA1 and BPC and all the other ones as well. There's some again awesome protocols we have for uh, ver various medical medical conditions and certain clinical scenarios, whether it's you know cosmetics, fat loss, uh, metabolic conditions, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, uh, neurologic conditions uh, like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, uh, just uh, cognitive enhancement. Um, autoimmune conditions, uh, a lot of cool protocols, combining these in a certain way in a certain time frame. Very cool stuff. So that's it for TB4. Um, hope, thanks for uh, tuning in, and uh, we'll talk about more peptides on the next one. Uh, so if you have any questions, reach out to me, let me know what, what you want to hear about. And uh, in preparation for New Year's Eve, hopefully everyone has a, new, a great New Year's Eve. And if I don't talk to you before then, we'll see you in 2020. Thanks, guys. Dr. Eric out.